Fox River, Fox River, how are you today? All right, good. Online, I see you too. How are you? Type it in the chat. Come on, let's get interactive. Let's have some fun together. All right, so, man, I'm so happy. I just, I know I say this sometimes, but I just want to say it again. This is kind of one of those things, like, you know, telling your spouse you, you love them. You know, you just can't say it enough. You never get to the limit. I just want to say, uh, I love you guys. I'm so happy to be a part of this church with you. God has been doing some special things in Fox River, and, and honestly, we have no reason to think he's going to stop anytime soon. So may his will continue to be done. I'm just happy to be a part of it on Team Jesus together. Listen, I've, I've, I've seen God's hand. God has come near to me, not only in this season of life at Fox River, but, but like in a lot of other ways. I've, se- I've seen um, people, lost people, um, be saved and, and rescued I've seen lives and families changed because of God's great love. God has protected me on many occasions, specific occasions, even protected my life from being extinguished. All right, maybe, maybe some of you have stories like that, like I could have died, but, but somehow I didn't, okay? I have a few of those. Um, God has given me words to say in certain situations where like, Five seconds before that, I had no words. I had no clue how to respond or what to say. I've seen him work in those ways. I've seen God provide exact amounts of money for me and my family and also in those that I know, some of us who are here this morning, so that exact bills could be paid on time or in his perfect timing. Sometimes there's a difference, you know. (laughs) I've also seen something crazy like something exceptional, something rare, like so rare that you might not even believe me when I say this, but I'm, I'm telling you the truth. As I followed God, I, I've even seen him wake a good friend of mine, an old friend, from coma. I've seen some amazing things, and I've experienced closeness with God. But I've also drifted from God and his grace Bad things have happened in my life. They've knocked me off course. I've returned to certain sins, just like a dog returns to their vomit. Yes, disgusting, but that's, sin is kind of in that same vein. It's just disgusting. Why would, why would I do that? I don't, I don't know, but I, I've done that, right? I've gone months and months without reading my Bible on several occasions since God saved me. And I've fallen into spiritual apathy on more than one occasion. Many, many, many times, God has seemed distant to me, even though he wasn't, but he's just seemed distant. And here's why. Because when it comes to following God, when it comes to following Jesus, it's filled with ups and downs, highs and lows. It's just the way it is with us humans. But listen, God is greater. Let's say that. God is greater. One more time. Hit me. God is greater than the ups and downs. Hallelujah. And as God's children, one gift of grace that he's just continually giving us, even this morning, is that we are never alone. Never. Even though at times, again, it sure feels like it, doesn't it? Listen, there's two truths in life, four if you count death and taxes, but the two truths are this, life is hard and we are prone to wander away from God and his grace, right? So those two truths, life is hard and we are prone to wander. When those two truths combine, here's the result, here's what happens in life, we find ourselves pretty quickly in one of the lows of life. And a lot of times when we're in one of those lows, here's what we're thinking. God, where are you? God, I can't hear from you. Have have you disappeared from me? Have you abandoned me? Have you forsaken me? Have you left me? I can't see you, feel you, hear you. I don't know what's going on. So, so, but here's the truth. He's not far from us, right? But it's really important. How do we hear from God in general? But more specifically, how do we hear from God in the lows, So I'm really excited about our time together today. I think God is really gonna meet many of us right where we are, maybe some of us even in the low that we are in, 
And I think he's gonna do some really special things today. So let's see what the answer is to how do we hear from God even in one of life's lows? Let's find that answer together. But first, let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for today. God, I pray that we hear from you today. God, I pray that we not only hear from you, but we understand what you're trying to tell us. And then somehow, some way, on top of those two big asks, hearing from you and understanding, God, I pray also that you would help us by your grace and by the power of your Holy Spirit, help us to respond in a good way to your good message of good grace from our good God. Help us to leave here today, Lord, wherever we are on the planet Earth, whether it's here in the room at one of our campuses or, or somewhere across the planet in our Fox River family that's online, Lord, wherever we're at, help us to leave this place today a changed people after having spent time with each other, but Lord, more importantly, after having spent time with you. And we pray kind of inside of all of those sub prayers, but, but certainly over as a banner over it all, we pray this most of all, that the name of Jesus Christ would be glorified in our hearts, but also in our lives. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And together as a church, we say amen. All right, hey, let's turn to 1 Kings chapter 19. We're gonna continue our journey, right? Turn there in your Bibles or, like, like I'm doing, or on your digital device of choice. But 1 Kings 19, we're gonna continue our journey, our case study for you academics out there, right, of the life of Elijah, all right? Uh, Pastor Guy got into chapter 19 last week. It was fantastic. Check it out if you haven't uh, heard for some reason, heard, heard that message. Um, but we're gonna continue in chapter 19 but I know some of us are like just, just maybe you haven't been able to be at all the, the messages of this current series that we're closing out this weekend. Um, so let's just make sure we're all up to speed. And, and if we're honest, maybe some of us have been there, but we just don't remember. You kind of fall into the Pastor Bill category. I can't remember a lot sometimes. When my kids remind me constantly of that. Dad, you can't remember that. My favorite color. I, you know, I'm like, I just have so much. I don't. Anyways, okay. So, so here's, here's some things about Elijah. Who is Elijah? Elijah is a prophet. Of God. Now, what, is, what does that mean? All right, here's how it worked back then. Um, God had a chosen people, Israel, right? When God wanted to say something to his people, he didn't say it directly to them. He would say it to his prophet, Elijah in this case, and then the prophet would relay that message to the people. Okay, that's, that's how it works. So you can think of Elijah as kind of like God's spokesperson. Uh, now, Elijah uh, lived about the year 900 B.C., so 900 years before Jesus Christ uh, became human and, and, and walked the earth for 30-something years, all right? Elijah lived during a very low point in Israel's history. Now, now why was it a low point? Here's, here's why it was a low point. The nation of Israel was divided. Imagine that. That's kind of hard to imagine. Okay. Um, the nation was divided. Uh, the leaders didn't fear or follow God. Leadership really matters, Okay. If, if, if leadership in a country or organization of any kind doesn't fear or follow God um, like they once did, things can really change super quickly, and that was the case here. So, so the nation was divided, the leaders didn't fear or follow God, and the people didn't worship God. This was a super low point where God's people didn't worship the God that loved them and rescued them, and it was just super, super low. Um, but God chose Elijah just like he chooses the church today, all right? But God chose Elijah to help turn things around the best that they could be turned around. And God did some amazing things through Eli. Here's just a quick journey, a quick survey of some of the amazing things that God did through the prophet Eli. God stopped and started the rain in the entire land, all right? That was definitely a high. Let's say it together, ready? High, okay? Here's another one. God supernaturally provided food on many occasions during the ensuing drought, right? In between when he stopped the rain and when he started it back up. In between there was a drought, there was a famine, but God provided food. And, and, and Eli saw this, right? And that was a high, right? Here's another one. God sent fire down. Pastor Jason uh, shared this with us a couple weeks ago. He sent fire down from heaven. That was definitely a high, right? And then God caused Elijah, this is kind of, cool when you just think about it, just, you know, I don't know how much it amounts to, but it's certainly a, a miracle and something really, really awesome. God caused Elijah to run faster than a horse. Wow, that was, that's pretty cool. Well, that was definitely a high, right? And here's another one. God raised a widow's only son. 
he was dead, but, but Elijah was there, and God worked through Elijah, and, and the dead son was raised back to life. That was definitely a high, right? Okay, so God did many, many miracles. Miracle after miracle through Elijah, the man whose name means the Lord is my God. There's never been a prophet like Elijah, all right? God was certainly with him in all of those miracles, but here's the problem. Elijah thought that he was all of a sudden all alone once the miracles stopped. He's like, God, you were with me in the miracles, but but now there's no miracles, so where are you? Okay, and that's kind of the backdrop here. Elijah fell into a lull in life that he never saw coming, all right? Within a very short time, we see Elijah running for his life into the wilderness, and when he gets to the wilderness, he just loses hope altogether, all right? Again, check out last week's message from Pastor Guy. Yet, here's what God did. God is this good, right? God met Elijah in his lowest point, as he does. That's where he met me, right? He was there the whole time. Don't miss that. But, but like, where did I meet God in my lowest, the very lowest point of my life? That's when I finally turned to Jesus and said, I'm, I'm going to trust you to save me. I'm, I'm in quite the mess, and I finally realized it. I need your help. God meets us in his lowest point. Listen, God is so good. He is so gracious. Amen? Amen. And, and he doesn't have to. Like, we don't deserve it. Nobody's obligated or forced his hand, but he chooses to because of his great love that he displayed through Jesus, by the way. All right? He doesn't have to do this, but he meets each of us in our lowest points of life. And even in those lowest points, he's not far from us. Can we give God some praise this morning? I'm just, I'm just wondering. Like, thank you, Jesus. Right? Thank you, Jesus. So good. All right, so let's see how Elijah hears from God. Again, even in this low point. Are we going to dive into verse number eight? Here we go. All right, so Elijah got up and he ate and he drank. Strengthened by that food, Elijah traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and he spent the night. All right, let's just pause for a second. Scripture says the mountain, and if you read the Hebrew, it says the cave, all right? So, so there's something special about this mountain. There's something special about this cave, and here's the special thing. A guy named Moses, you might have heard of him, but a guy named Moses, about 400 years before, give or take, all right, about 400 years before, Moses went to this same mountain, Mount Horeb, all right, the mountain of God, uh, only only. We don't see this in the text right here, but Horeb was also known as Mount Sinai, right? This is where Moses went up the mountain, stayed there for 40 days and 40 nights. Oh, that sounds familiar. And he came down with tablets of stone written by, right, Ten Commandments written by the very finger of God. This is the same mountain where God took Moses and hid him in the cleft or the cave of the rock on the side of the mountain, and God passed by, right? And, and now Elijah... After 40 days and 40 nights, he's on the mountain, the same mountain, and he's in the cave, the same cave, just like Moses. I mean, this is just like you see the parallels, just jumping off the page once we talk about this, this right? I mean, it's crazy. And, and Elijah, no doubt, he's, he's like, okay, what's, what's, what's about to go down? All right, here, let's keep reading. This is continued in verse 9. And when he's on the mountain, he's in the cave, then the word of the Lord came to him. And here's what God said. What are you doing here, Elijah? Now, the first thing we have to notice is this. God spoke to Elijah in his low. That's the first thing. And the second thing is this, which is really important. Elijah was listening. Understand, God is constantly speaking to each one of us. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ and you've trusted him to save, one of the gifts of God, this is a really big gift, by the way, but he gives his Holy Spirit to the believer And and the Holy Spirit indwells or takes up residence within. So God, the Holy Spirit, talks or communicates, right, or speaks to the believer from the inside, right, teaching and and leading, right? But but here's here's something that we, we might not immediately be aware of. Not only does God speak to the believer through his Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit also speaks to those who don't believe yet, 
And I thank God that that's true because without the help of the Holy Spirit, I never would have turned to Jesus. Let me explain. Here's, and, and Jesus talks about this. He teaches about this in John chapter 16 if you want to learn more because I'm going to like super mega abbreviate it, okay? But one of the mis, uh, ministries, it's a mystery too, but one of the ministries of, of, of um, the Holy Spirit is he convicts. He has this ministry of conviction upon the person who doesn't believe in Jesus yet. And, 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 and basically in a spiritual type of way, um, he, he directs the person's gaze to Jesus. Like whatever's going on in life, the Holy Spirit uses it and he just gently says, see Jesus. Like just, just see Jesus. Like he can help you with this mess. Um, you have a sin problem. I'm making you aware of that. And, and Jesus is the solution, right? That's that ministry of conviction of the Holy Spirit. So we see very clearly from Scripture that the Holy Spirit, God himself, he speaks to believers, and he also speaks to unbelievers. So, so with those two, two facts, here's what we can arrive at with ultra confidence. The issue is not, is God speaking? The real issue, right, once you uncover the truth, the real issue is this, are we listening? Hmm. So he's got Elijah's attention, and, and here's, here's what God says to Elijah. Verse 10 uh, sorry, I'll finish up verse nine. The question is, what are you doing here, Elijah? And here was Elijah's response. Elijah replied, I have been very zealous. Let me start that sentence over just to give proper emphasis, okay? What are you doing here, Elijah? And here's how Elijah answers. I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites, however, have rejected your covenant. They've torn down your altars. They've put your prophets to death, there used to be a lot of them, but, but not so much anymore. They put them to death with the sword, and guess what? I'm the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me. Inside of Eli's answer, he's commending himself, and he's condemning the people. He's commending himself, I'm zealous, I've been zealous, I'm trying to, I'm doing my best here, but he's condemning God's people. Listen, they've forsaken you, right? They, they, they don't want anything to do with you. And here's one major takeaway that's hiding in the shadows of his answer. I know as soon as I say it, we're all going to be like, oh my gosh, it's right there. I can't believe I didn't see that. He makes no significant mention of God. He talks about himself, talks about the people, but he has no significant mention of God, which communicates this. God I've been trying, but I can't do this without you. Like, you were with me before, but you're not with me in this, because like when you were with me, it was, it was obvious, it was clear. I mean, amazing things happened. There was no question, God, you were, you were there, but, but now nothing's happening. In fact, it's the opposite. Bad things are happening, and it's, it's just super obvious. Everyone would agree, Lord, I don't have to convince you. It's just so out there in the open, you're not with me now. See, Elijah experienced amazing things, and he witnessed many miracles, but somewhere along the way, Elijah had gotten off track, and just like the rest of God's people, Elijah, unknowingly, Elijah had forsaken God too. See, again, God was there when things were going good, but not here, not now. I mean, God, how could you be here with me in this low? Listen, I saw God 25 years ago when I was saved in that low point. I saw him so clearly. He, he, he did a miracle in my heart, and he, he turned my life around. No exaggeration. It was amazing. I see God. I see his hand when, whenever he answers a bold prayer. And as God's people, it's important that we pray bold prayers to God, all right? I've, when he answers those, I mean, it's really exciting when he answers them in the way that I expect him to answer. That's even more exciting. But when I see him answer bold prayers, it's unmistakable. God is in those things. I, I, I saw God uh, in Kenya just a few weeks ago when I was there with my daughter and the rest of our Fox River team. I saw him changing individual lives. I saw him changing families. I saw him changing communities and a country, one meal and one Christian education at a time. I mean, there's no mistake. God was there. He was doing things. I saw his hand. I saw miracles taking place. But what about when life is normal and regular? God, are you there? Are you in, are you in the just day-to-day -day stuff, right? And what about when times are tough? I mean, it's harder to hear from God, right, in, in the hurt or, or in the hard times. Just 
It's just different. It's, it's hard. God, I heard you in the highs, but, but I don't know. I mean, here in the lows, something, something's just, it's just different, right? And just like each of us have a tendency to do, Elijah unknowingly, I don't think he did it on purpose, I honestly don't, but he unknowingly disconnected from God as soon as God chose to move in a different way. God doesn't always just move in the highs. He, he doesn't just move in the miracles. He just doesn't move in the good times, right? right? But God chooses to move differently sometimes. And, and when he chose to move differently with Elijah, Elijah unknowingly disconnected. And that's when the Lord said to Eli, hey, I wanna, I wanna show you something. Okay, now, now let's see how this plays out. Verse number 11, the Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain, because Elijah's like deep in the cave at this point, right? Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord's about to pass by. All right, so here's, here's just a, a quick pause. Here's what we see. Elijah emerges from the depth of the cave, and, and he comes out, like the edge of the mountain's kind of right there by the edge of the stage, and, and, and he comes out, and he's like, all right, I'm not getting too close because I don't want to, you know, like tumble, so he's, I'm just going to keep my... Keep my I'm still kind of in the cave, but I'm, I'm like coming to the, anyway, so that, that's, that's the physical situation. Stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, right? Like, so, so just imagine this, uh, this powerful F9 tornado shows up and just starts ripping the mountain apart. And Elijah's like, man, I'm so thankful I didn't go all the way to the edge. I'm kind of still protected here from all the debris and flying rocks and stuff. Like, like but this, this super strong storm springs up out of nowhere. And Elijah's like, I see God's hand in this. I see his power. I see his strength. I can, I can like feel it. But watch this. But the Lord himself was not in the wind. Like he caused it, but, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind or the tornado, there was an earthquake. All right, so just, just imagine that. All right, the mountain starts shaking. Elijah's like, oh my goodness, is, is the ceiling going to cave in on me? I hope not, because I think God's got more to show me here. It wouldn't work out if I died right now. So he's got a little bit of faith probably going, but he's like, whoa. And then just like in Superman 1, the, the ground splits open, like cars are falling in and stuff like that. I mean, that's this. He's like, this is. I see God's hand. I see his power and his might. Wow. But watch this. But the Lord himself was not in the earthquake. Like he caused it, but he wasn't actually in it. Verse 12. After the earthquake came a fire. All right? Now, now sometimes fires are so hot they can actually... Um, cause rocks to set fire. So I don't know if that's what it was. Like, like the fire was on the mountainside itself, like the mountain is burning. I don't know. Did lightning strike? And, and like, was he watching this, this blaze of, of, you know, vegetation at the bottom of the mountain? I, I don't know. Was this big bang number two? All of a sudden, spontaneous combustion. Like, Whoa. All right. Did, did, did somebody else flick their cigarette or something and like a, a, a bush caught fire? I mean, I don't, I don't know. But whatever this fire was, it was, it was displaying the intensity of the Lord himself. No mistake, God caused this. But watch this. But the Lord himself, right? The Lord was not in the fire. Huh. So he's causing all these things, these, these miracles, but God is not actually in those things. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. The Hebrew here communicates silence. So there was a silence. I know some of us will be able to understand what I'm about to say. Others maybe, maybe not, if we're honest, but silence has a particular sound, doesn't it? Like, like you can hear the silence. That, that's what's going on right here. So then there was a silence, this, this gentle breeze, this gentle wind, this gentle whisper. Verse 13, when Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face, and then he goes out, he went out and he stood at the mouth of the cave. Like now he's like, okay, God is, something is different. God is here. It's like, God, I saw your hand in the big stuff. I saw your hand in the miraculous, but I did not expect to see you in the silence 
of a gentle, normal breeze. See, God wanted Elijah, and he wants us to know today, he wants us to know something very important, that he was with him the whole time. Like, all the time, everywhere, God was with Elijah. In the highs and in the lows, God was never far away. Together we say, God is greater than the highs and the lows. Listen, God is with you in your gladness. He's with you in your sadness as well. God is with you. He doesn't participate with you or engage with you, but he's, but he's present with you. He hasn't left you alone, but he's, he's with you when you sin. He's with you in your marriage struggles. He's with you in addiction and in your recovery. He's with you in the hurt and in the heartache, and he's with you in the healing. He's with you in your poverty. He's with you in your stress. Students hear this just with with great gladness. He's with you when you're studying. And may all of us hear this. He's with us in every test that life offers to us. He's with you in your sleeping, he's with you in your waking, he's with you in your coming, he's with you in your going, his faithfulness, like God's with you. His faithfulness does not depend on your faithfulness. Hallelujah for that, right? He is faithful even when we are not. His performance is based on Christ's performance. His permanence, rather, is based on Christ's performance, the permanence of his presence. He's always there. The permanence of his provision, he always provides. The permanence of his great love, right? For God so loved the world, right? God demonstrates his love in this, that Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, right? His, his love is, is constant, right? It's permanent, His permanence is based on Christ's performance. See, Jesus Christ lived perfectly in our place because we couldn't do it. Then Jesus Christ died for our sins in our place because we couldn't do it. And then Jesus Christ, after three days in the grave, on the very first Easter Sunday, he rose to life again. Why did he do that? Because we couldn't do it. And he made a way for us so that we could live again forever also. This is good news. This is really good news. And it communicates something absolutely beautiful, which is at the very core of God's grace, that his love for us is absolutely unconditional. He is for you. Some of us need to hear that today. He is for you. He is on your side. He is cheering you on. He's like, he's he's just so for you. He wants you to succeed. He wants the best for you. He wants fullness of joy for you. He is so for you, and he is not far from any one of us. He's not far from you and I. In fact, the very opposite is true. He is with us. He is near us. One of the names of Jesus is Im Anu El. We call it Emmanuel, right? And it means with us God, or as we're more familiar with, God with us. God with us because Jesus came and he dwelt among men, yes. But God with us because of Jesus. In the aftermath of the resurrection, what did Jesus say at the end of the Great Commission? I am with you. Even to the end of the age, God is with us because of Jesus. We can always, because of Jesus, we can always hear from God if we want to. Now, here's a rhetorical question. Don't answer it. This is just between you and God. Do you want to hear from God? If you do, here's how we can hear from him. Right here, this is his word. This is the word of God from him to us. He revealed things about himself, about his love, about his grace, about his activity in the people he loves, in the world that he created and wants to redeem back fully through Jesus Christ, right? This is his word to us. Are we taking it in? It's so important that we take in God's grace in the form of the word of God. Right? That's why we talk about verse of the day every weekend at Fox River. Okay? That's why every single sermon you ever hear at Fox River is going to be founded and taught from the word of God because it's that important. It's central to God's ministry to people like us, to sinners like us. We need it. There's grace in it. 
right? Now, now maybe you're in this, this situation where you're like, I didn't even know I could. I come from a religious background, by the way. The first 19 years of my life, I was kind of taught that you, you're not supposed to read this for yourself. Only the person on, on the stage or, or, you know, by the altar is supposed to tell you about that, okay? So maybe some of us are in that boat. Like, I didn't even know I'm supposed to. Like, is it okay that I? You know? And the answer is yes. God has given us his word so that we might have it and read it and take it in. All right, some of us may be in a similar category, although it is distinct. We might be like, I don't even know where to start. This is kind of intimidating. It's kind of overwhelming. I'm not a theologian. I've never studied. I've never gone to school for the Bible. I, I just, I don't know how it works. Help me out, Bill. Where do I start? Here's a great place to start. Pick one of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. They're all about Jesus. And the nice thing about the Gospels is they're really, really clear, like 99% of the time. There's, there'll be some things you're like, ah, I don't know about that one. All right, but, but most of it is super clear, and it's really core Christianity. Like we're seeing the life of Jesus and, and kind of how things work in the kingdom. It's, it's really nice. So I suggest you start there. But whatever you're doing, maybe you have a devotional time that you, you can set up. Every day I'm, I'm reading at 6 a.m. Or every day I'm going to read a chapter before I go to bed. Or, or every day, you know, verse of the day is going to come up. If you don't have the Bible app, by the way, because what's verse of the day? It's a part of the Bible app. Scan the QR code, get the Bible app on your phone, and you can program inside of the Bible app that the verse of the day will give you a notification at a certain time. Maybe, maybe that's what the beginning of this getting in the word journey looks like for you. It's just reading the verse of the day every day, okay? But take it in. If we do not get into God's word, then we will not know him or hear from him in the ways that we could or should. That's, that's just matter of fact truth right there. But if we do get in the word and we spend time with God, then we are going to hear from him. And it never gets dull, right? It's always fresh. His word is living and active, right? Sharper than any two-edged sword, right? Hebrews chapter four. I mean, there, there's just, but God speaks to us through his word. God also meets with us and speaks to us in prayer. Prayer is a time where we can Pour out our praise to God. God, I praise you for who you are. I praise you and I thank you. I have just this heart of gratitude. Even through tears sometimes, I, I thank you for the good things that you've done in my life and in the life of others and in the world. I know you're active, God. Thank you for all that you've done. We praise him, but we can also pour out our problems to God in prayer also, and I highly encourage that we do this, right? It's not only like, God, I can share this, but I can't share this. No, we share it all. He knows it already. He wants that communion, that fellowship, that relationship. We just pour it out to him in praise, and when we share our problems with him, right? And, and don't get caught into this trap that I was caught in for many years, if I'm honest. Prayer is not a one-way street. It's a two-way avenue, okay? So, so when we pray, that's us talking to him, but let's take and let's make time to listen. God, what are you saying? If you're going to respond to just all that I'm saying, um, what are you saying? That, make room for that, all right? Prayer is a two-way Avenue. So God speaks to us through his word, he speaks to us through prayer, and he also speaks to us through others, okay? Here's a couple quick examples. Church, we're in a, a community of faith together. The more we come together at church and worship and learn together, there's a certain grace. Think of like a spotlight, okay? Um, there's, there's a spotlight of grace like right there. I see it, but I'm gonna stay right here. <laughs> like the grace is available, but I'm gonna stay here. It's important that, that here's, here's the decision we make. We need to position ourselves or place ourselves or put ourselves in that place of grace. See, God makes it available, but it's up to us to step into it, okay? And one of those places that God has made his grace available is here at church, okay? So, so we need to get in that community together and hear from him. He speaks to us in those situations. Another situation or, or, or environment of Christian community, a faith community, is in small groups. Now, now, I hope all of us are in a small group. The reality is many of us are not. I wanna encourage you strongly to get into a small group. This fall, we've got something amazing and just really powerful. I've been through this particular curriculum many times. Our whole church is aligning. God, I mean, Bill, just, just say it. What, what's the, it's called rooted. You guys may be, I didn't hear that. Let me say it a little differently. It's rooted. Oh, see, now it sounds familiar. Rooted, okay? Rooted is, is, man, I'm telling you, it just might change your life. God might use it to change your life. The trajectory of your walk with Jesus after having gone through Rooted might just all of a sudden up and to the right in a, in a really awesome, tangible, spiritual 
way. Scan the QR code, go to foxriverchristian.org, go to the Welcome Center, talk to anybody here, get registered for a Ritter group this fall. So God speaks to us through his word, he speaks to us through prayer, he speaks to us through others, and he also, like we said before, he speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. Are we saying yes to him? Are we listening to the leading of the Holy Spirit in our lives? The more we say yes, the easier it is to hear from him, the louder his voice gets, all right? The, the more we say no to him, if the Holy Spirit's leading us a certain way and we're like, nah, I'm not really on board with that, um, the quieter his voice gets. The harder it is to discern, is that, is that the Holy Spirit's voice or is that, you know, that burrito that I ate last night? Well, wh wh which one is it, right? <laughs> like, like, it gets harder the more we say no. But God speaks to us, he speaks to us constantly. Where are you in life right now? Are you in a high, are you in a low? Are things just kinda normal? All right, and, and let me just kind of narrow the focus a little bit, if you'll allow me to. What are you doing here? What are you doing here in this season of life? What are you doing here as a part of this service today? Do you want to hear from God? Because that's exactly what he's offering. Wherever you're at, do you want to hear from God here today. He's speaking to you right now. For some of us, listen, it's encouragement. It's like, man, you're, you're doing a really good job. Keep it up. This is great. We're, we're, we're doing awesome things together. And even in the normal things and even in the low times, like we're together and then keep it up. For some of us, it's a different kind of encouragement. And the encouragement is, hey, turn to me, all right? Hear my voice. Come near. I can help you with whatever's going on. And, and, I, and I want to help you with whatever's going on. And for some of us, it's, it's just a tiny bit different even than that. For some of us, it's this. Believe in me. Trust Jesus for the very first time. The Holy Spirit's been working on you for a while. I know that feeling quite well. <laughs> He's been working on you. It's like, you believe in me. Would you trust Jesus to save you from your sins? Would you trust Jesus to lift you from this low? Would you trust Jesus to turn your life and your eternity completely around for the better. Listen, because of Jesus, there's always hope. Because of Jesus, we can always hear from God. Somebody help me out. Say hallelujah. Say praise the Lord. God is good. Clap, hoot, holler. Somebody do something because God deserves some praise. He is so good to us. It's because of Jesus we can always hear from him. Listen, Let's, let's close things out in prayer right now. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for, God, your grace. We thank you for communicating with us today. And God, we thank you that we were able to hear from you. Um, thank you for our time together. Thank you that because of Jesus, we can always hear from you. Thank you for the work of your Holy Spirit in our lives, Lord, leading some of us back to you and some, Lord, even to receive you for the first time. If that's you, whether you're in the room or online, if that's your desire to receive Jesus and his help for the first time today. With eyes still closed, with heads still bowed, I just wanna ask you, wherever you're at, just, just to raise your hand nice and high, like, man, that's me, I'm, I'm turning to Jesus right now. I wanna receive him, I wanna receive his help, I wanna be saved from my sins, I wanna be lifted from my low, I want him to turn my life and my eternity around. Anybody receiving Jesus? Thank you, Lord, for the good work you're doing in this place. Thank you, Lord. For those of us who are turning to Jesus for the first time, we pray this prayer together. I believe in you, Lord Jesus. I believe that I need your help. I need your forgiveness. I need your grace. I believe you died for my sins. I believe you rose from the grave three days later for my life. And I'm trusting in you, not myself. I'm trusting in you alone to save me and to make me new from the inside out. I receive you, Jesus, as Savior, right here right now. Thank you. Lord, for every believer in our Fox River family, help us as we follow you. Help us in the ups and in the downs. Help us to see that you are greater. Help us to remember, Lord, that you are with us and for us. And remember, Lord, help us to remember this as well, that because of Jesus, we can always hear from you. Lord Jesus, be glorified in your church and through your church here at Fox River, we pray in your name. Amen.